All right, so I got a cool comparison video to do for you today. So uh, Joel sent me his Bosch 95s to have clean and float, and then uh, his buddy Mark had some ID 1000 he wanted to have uh, clean and tested as well. So I just got done cleaning both sets and testing them, and they are good to go. But before I send them back, take this opportunity to actually put them on the rail together and test them. Um, so I've ha I've had them before. These you know I've had ID one thousands and ninety fives cleaning before, but I've never had it like this where I've got two sets at the same time from two different cars. You know, third party where I can actually just throw them on and compare them and see how they do. Um, now the the original ID one thousand is a available uh, Bosch injector anyway. Um, because now they've been replaced with the 1050Xs. So you can't even buy these ones anymore. Um, if you buy new from ID, it's the 1050Xs, which is an exclusive injector they have made for them. <clears throat> so you can only find these used, but you can still get the original 95s, or which are comparable to the original ID 1000s. You can still get those news from Bo new from Bosch Motorsports. But anyway, so what we're going to do is Throw, throw them on the rail and run them through all the tests and see how they compare. It'll be a uh, be cool test. So I get this set up over here. Stay. All right. Get a ID one thousand and put it on there. And another one. And actually, I'm gonna stagger them. So the rail feeds in the mid, rail feed comes in here in the middle, and the gauge is off to one side. But just to get a really good comparison, I'll alternate ID 1000 and then <coughs> Bosch 95 on the rail. Four on. Can I see them. Plugged in. Put them all straight, tighten down the rail. All right, so we got four on there, two IDs and two Bosch 95s. So one through four, we got an ID 1000, Bosch 95, ID 1000, and Bosch 95. All right, and I'll go ahead and flush all the air out. So this just opens and closes them. Get all the air in the rail flushed out, primed. And we'll verify pressure. Right at 40 psi. So we're at 40 psi. Go to an idle. Oh, that was the ultrasonic sink. Here's idle. Turn this sideways so you can see all four. So here they are, idling. Right? Same spray patterns, right? So if you haven't seen the tips before, so here's the 1000. It's got the single orifice tip, ball seat, 360 degree spray pattern. 
and that's the same on the Walsh 95. So the same tips, the spray patterns are the same. Great atomization, 360 degree conical spray pattern. Alright, here's mid RPM range, about 3500 RPM. Max RPM, 7500. Alright, and then the first test I'm going to do um, is a dynamic flow test. So this test runs the injectors from idle 700 RPM to 7500 RPM three times, and we will compare the flow output. So they ran through three times. And the value here, the actual value reading is not important. I mean, you can already see they're flowing the same amount, which this is a more important test to see that an injector is behaving properly and comparable to the rest in the set. So this simulates actually driving the car, accelerating, you know, running through the RPM range. So dynamically, if you're driving these injectors through the RPM range, they are all delivering the same amount of fuel to each cylinder. And that's really key. Dynamically matched or flowing sets, you know, these are all dead on within a percent or so of each other. So that's really what you want to see. That looks good. And that, like I said, that's the real, the real factor. If you have variance here in your, in your set in a dynamic flow test, that's not good. Um, either there's a tolerance off in the injector where it's clean or clogged, like I said, but all these are freshly cleaned. And they're all, right, the ID and the Bosch is on the same rail, delivering the same amount of fuel through the RPM range. And then we'll do a shifting speed test. It would simulate like a downshift or an upshift. They're going to rapidly change speed. Right, and so the, the point of that is you want to make sure there's no delay in the, the commanded duty cycle, right? So you want to make sure all the injectors are shifting to the new or higher low speed at the same time, right? That simulates an up or down shift. And then the final we'll do an actual static flow test. Now this is the test everyone likes to do because it's the max flow of the injector. It's what it's rated at. But realistically, you're never operating the injector at max duty cycle um, or static. Right, you tend to lose flow control when it's static. When the injector is, when the order for the injector to pulse and open again happens before the previous pulse closes, you can lose some air fuel control, and that's common for any injector. So that's why you hear you typically don't want to run it static, but it's where you get the flow rate of the injector. So it's still a valid test to make sure the injector is actually flowing the full amount to its capability that it's supposed to. But you do tend to see some more variance there. So in a really good set, when you buy it. It'll be, it'll be flow tested or flow matched. So your set of eight will match dynamically and static. And that's like the best of both worlds. You know, all your cylinders are getting the right amount of, you know, same amount of fuel. So here we go with the static. I don't pay too much attention to the foam, right? Because when these sit in here, the angles aren't perfectly straight down, so they'll foam up at different rates. So once all the air comes out and settles, then we'll really look and see what the uh, 
amount was flow, flow through each injector. All right, and like I said, you can see that little bit of variance that's static. But you, you, you know, you, when you drive the car, you're not, you know, maxing. You know, if the injector can support a thousand horsepower, you know, you're never going to want to run it to max. So you're always going to keep it 95, 90 percent duty cycle or less. So you don't get this tolerance variance. But you can see there's a little bit of variance, which is not uncommon. It's not much, but. If we look at the numbers, they're all pretty close, comparable to each other. And there's a that's an ID1000 there, and a Bosch 95 there, ID1000 there, and a Bosch 95 there. Now that Bosch 95 is a little lower over there by the gauge, but compared to its set, it's within a few percent, which is passing. For Bosch, their uh, variance from the factory at static is 6%. So whenever you have anything matched within 1% to 2% or better, it's, it's perfectly fine. But yeah, they flow the same amount of fuel static. Um, dynamically, they're spot on. So what can we take from this? You can mix these up. You could run... Stagger them. You can run them, mix these up eight and put them on the car, and it's going to run fine. It'll run on the same data. The injectors behave the same way, and it's pretty much it the comparison. So, if you're looking for injectors and find a set of original ID1000s you use for a good deal, get them. But if you want to get Bosch 95s, they're also, it's a, you know, they're both Bosch injectors, both good choices. But that was really cool to see a no shit comparison in real time. Two used sets that came into me. That I cleaned and tested and now put them on a rail and test them at the same time. So, alright, that's pretty much it. Thanks.